Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create a slippy surface inside of your games. So if I were to hit play, I'll show you what we're going to make today. So as I'm walking on the grass, this is a normal material, this is perfectly fine, so nothing will be different. But as soon as we go onto this ice, so a slippy surface, you see when I stop moving, we're actually going to slide forwards, and I'll just general control, so it's going to be really slippy and slidey like this. Now you can change this and customize it to have it however you want, so more slippy, less slippy, more or less control, anything along those lines. And again, as soon as I were to come off of this surface, we're going to be back to normal. So this one we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So there are many different ways of doing this. For example, you could do it maybe through physical materials. So if you wanted it to be based on each material, you could do it that way. However, the way I'm going to be doing it is not through that. It's going to be a more simple and more basic method of just using a simple box collision. As I think that is going to be the most versatile for us. So we can have it just in a general area rather than a specific material. Because maybe you want a material in two different areas. One would be slippy, one wouldn't. Because for example, maybe you have wood that would be slippy somewhere but not somewhere else. Anyway, we don't need to go into that much detail. We're just again going over the area. So first things first, what we need to do is create an actor for this. So we're going to right click on our content browser, create a blueprint class and we're going to create an actor and I'm just going to name this one Slippery Surface BP as that makes the most sense for me and I'll open it up straight away. What I want to do in here first is I'm going to create a plane so I'll add in a plane like so. Now the only reason I'm doing this is just so I can get a preview and more easily see what area I'm covering that's going to be slippy. So I only want this to be in editor so first thing I'm going to do is search for hidden in game and tick that there. So we're not going to be able to see this in the game, as again we don't want it like that. So let's also actually disable the collision. So we'll go to collision presets and set it to no collision. So essentially this is not here in the game at all, we can't see it and we can't collide with it. It's simply there just for a visual representation of the area for us the developers while editing. Next we're going to deselect this and add in a box collision like so. And this is going to be where the player is going to be inside of to actually be on the slippy surface. So we want this to be the exact same size or slightly bigger than this plane here. Because again, the plane is a visual representation of where we're going to be slipping. The box collision is the actual area. So to make this the right size, we don't want to change the scale. We want to change the box extent. Now, if you're just going to be doing what I'm doing and getting a plane at default size, the box extent you're going to want is 50, 50 and 10. So you'll see this is covering it perfectly. And the reason why I've got 10 on the Z is just to give us that little bit of leeway so when we put this on top of another surface we do actually have that area above it that we're going to be able to collide with. Because again we want to make sure the player can collide and enter this box so just giving it that little bit of room there just make sure the player's feet and legs can definitely fit inside of this. Whereas if we left it at 1 you'll notice there's not much room there for them to actually be able to collide with it. That's why we're setting it to 10. So we'll compile and save with that. Next, we're going to go over to the construction script and set up a few things. So what we're going to do is hit the variable here and we're going to name this one show plane question mark and we'll leave that as a boolean and tick the eyeball to make it instance editable. So essentially this means we can toggle on and off the visibility of the plane in the editor so we can see a preview of what's underneath it as well. So I'm going to drag this in, get show plane and then also out of the construction script, I'm simply going to just set visibility of the plane like so. And we can just input new visibility into show plane. So if show plane is true, we're going to show it. The new visibility will be true. If show plane is false, the new visibility will be false. So we'll compile and set the default value of show plane to be true. Then after this, what we're going to do is we're going to want to scale it up and down. So we're going to drag in a box, drag in the plane, and then out of one of these, we're going to set relative scale 3D, connecting both of them into there like so. Then we'll just connect this into set visibility like so. So we're going to be doing both of these on the construction script. We will right click new scale 3D and split the structure pin, leaving the new scale 3DZ as one. So we're not going to be changing the Z value at all. Then the X and Y wants to be another variable. So we're going to hit the plus variable here, naming this size. We'll change this one to be a float and again tick the eye so it's instance editable. Then we'll drag and drop this in like so, connecting it into X and Y. And if we compile it, we can set the default value to 1. 
Now, if we go back to the viewport, you should see this shouldn't look any different. It should be the same. If it doesn't look the same to you, that means you've done something wrong. So if you can't see it, make sure show plane is true and also make sure size is one. Now, if we go to the event graph, we can delete these two nodes and start doing the code to actually make the player slip. So to do this, we're gonna right click on the box collision, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click on again, add event, add on component end overlap. Because again, when the player is in this box collision, they're slipping, when they're not in the box collision, they're normal. So that's why we have begin and end overlap. Now we want to make sure this is done specifically for the player. So out of other actor, what we're gonna do is cast two and then the name of our player. So mine is BP third person character. Now, if you have multiple players or you don't want to do it on a cast because you don't like the efficiency of it, you can use blueprint interfaces instead, which I'll leave a link in the description down below and on screen now to my video on blueprint interfaces, which should help you out quite a lot in setting that up. But doing it with a cast like this is perfectly fine, especially for single player games where this is the only character you have. And we're gonna do that for both begin and end overlap. Now we're gonna do the end overlap first, so going back to normal, so setting the player to be not slippy again, just so we can go over the default values. So as third person character, or whatever yours is called, we're going to get character movement, and this should be all the way at the very bottom, like so. Out of this, what we're gonna do is set ground friction, connecting that in here, and the default value for ground friction is a value of eight. Then we'll drag out of character movement again and set breaking deceleration walking, connecting that in there. And the default value for this is 2000. Now you can double check this for you to make sure you A, haven't changed it and B, it is actually like this in your engine version because it has changed slightly from four to five. So to do this, you can just open up your character blueprint wherever that is for you, select the character movement and search for what we did. So search for ground friction, you'll see it's eight, and search for breaking deceleration walking, you'll see it's 2000. So we can close this, go back to our blueprint, and again, this is the only two things we're gonna change, the ground friction and the breaking deceleration. So we can select these three nodes, Control C to copy them, Control V to paste them, and then just move them up to the begin overlap, so where we're now actually gonna make the player slippy. All I'm gonna do for this is set the ground friction to zero, and the breaking deceleration walking to 350. Now you can obviously change these values to be absolutely whatever you like, but these are the ones which I'm using and I use in the overview at the start of the video. So if you like those values, use these as well. But these are just some which I found when testing out earlier. So again, obviously find your own if you want, you can just mess about these values and changing them. Because obviously when you walk on ice, you do actually have friction on the ground. It's not like there's zero friction, but I think that looks the best. And again, these values work best for me. So I'll compile, save that, and we can close it. What I'm going to do now is add this into my level. So what I'm going to do is select my ice as this is just a plane I already have. And I'm just going to copy the location by right clicking on there. Then I'm going to drag in my slippery surface BP, right click location and paste. So it's in the exact same place. So it's on the same height as well. That's the main important part I wanted. Then I'm going to scale up. But instead of doing it normally like this, because that won't then work perfectly with the box collision, you can see it's going up as well, which obviously we do not want we're instead gonna be using our size button we have here. So I'm just gonna increase this float variable like so, and you'll notice this is now getting bigger and staying perfectly how we want. So I think this is gonna be good for me. Obviously it doesn't need to be this big, but this is gonna be fine for me. Obviously if you did have it this big, this is actually possibly going through the landscape, although no it's not, because I've made sure to lower this down. So this is fine, but that is something to keep in mind make sure this isn't affecting anywhere else that you don't want it to be slippy. Now you'll notice again, because they have them on the same height location, they are Z fighting, which is that flickering horrible glitch we have here. That's why I added in the show plane button. We can untick that and now we can't see it. Again, that's just a nice representation to be able to easily see where we actually have it. But once we've got that, we can hit play and this should now be working perfectly for us. We'll go over to the ice and we can see that we now have this slippery, controls which we have here and if I had to stop walking we're obviously going to slide like this and if I had to walk on the grass it's going to be perfectly normal working fine for us. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. 
what we've done is we've set up this slippery surface in which, as you can see here, when we're walking, we have less control, we're sliding all over the place, and when we stop moving, we're gonna be slipping and sliding like this as well. And this only works in the designated area we set. So if we were to go over here on the grass, it's gonna be perfectly normal. But if we walk onto the ice, it's gonna be doing it like this. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.